here's the wing, <coughs> here's the hole for the servo, and here is the servo. And I'm going to insert the servo here and I'm going to orient it like this because I want the um, the rod going to the aileron to be as short as possible. The servo <coughs> fits in here and sits comfortably there but there's one problem um, it's sitting on balsa wood we don't want that because balsa wood is soft and eventually the uh, servo is going to crush the the balsa wood and become loose and start moving and with this with it connected to the aileron with this is not something that we want to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away the balsa so that the servo will be sitting straight onto the plywood Now I can place the servo down here into its hole and it will seat on the plywood. It will be um, rock solid and will not start to move and upset our aileron. Here's the servo in its place and I am screwing it down but I'm not using the screws that came with the servo I'm using these these are um, hex uh, screws they are for a, a hex key and I got them from a, f a, a, a company called modelfixings.com you can buy these in bulk from them they're very very good now I drill a hole using one and a half millimeter drills and because in this case the holes are not uh, made in the kit so I put the, the screw in and I use uh, the hex key like this because I've got one <laughs> and There we are. Now I've just got two more to do. In the kit from Slack, we get this two millimeter push rod, a clevis, and a control horn. Now to place the horn, we just put the um, the clevis on the push rod, and then hook it onto the servo. I'm going to have it here on the outside. On both um, on both ailerons the clevis will be hooked on the outside. In that, that way you get uh, different movements. Now I just line up the, the, the push rod down onto the aileron and make a mark. And fortunately here is a hinge and the center of the control horn will be right next to the hinge which is very good. There's, there's one um, bad thing about just taking a control horn and screwing it down onto balsa wood and that is that balsa wood is soft and it will eventually um, 
be crushed and everything will go out of alignment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, plywood and there's a lot of it, uh, a lot of scrap plywood that comes with the kit. I'm going to cut a little um, rectangle of it and then I'm going to uh, embed it into the aileron. So here is the aileron and here is the little light ply um, rectangle that I'm going to um, fit there. Now to begin with I want the middle of this rectangle to fall on this line. So I know that this rectangle that I cut, cut is 50 millimeters so I just measure 25 and there's the center. So now I just place it here and I make it overlap the bevel a little bit like that and then you can draw around it with a pencil or which is even better you cut around it with a knife. Which means that the recess is going to fit exactly to the piece that you made, doesn't matter what size or shape it is. There we are. Now, this balsa wood, uh, sorry, this um, plywood is about three millimeters thick so we are going to go three millimeters down here it's nice to have a line to go to um, three millimeters is a lot so quite deep actually so we enhance our cuts a little bit Now the problem is getting this thing out. So what to use? Well, a well sharpened chisel is the best thing. And uh, we're going to use that. The, the best thing is to try and take as little as possible. You can always take more, but the problem is adding two if you take too much. So. Sharpen your chisel and go slowly. Now we go the other, other side, just a little at a time, there's no hurry, this is a hobby, should be enjoyable. And the carving balsa is strangely 
satisfying actually now we are um, we've got the depth sort of uh, on either side so what about the hump in the middle well you just turn the chisel around and go that way notice that when you're cutting balsa wood like this and you're going with the grain it cuts very cleanly it's like going through warm butter if you go perpendicular to the grain like this it will rip doesn't like this so go with the grain and it's about a millimeter off the road, so we carry on carving. Now we can use some uh, fish to be on the Seems to be all the way down here, half a up here. There we are. That's it. Now, glue. Now I just have to do the other aileron and the other side of this one. Here is the aileron, just about ready. And now I have to um, take this control horn and um, bolt it to the aileron right there. Uh, supplied with the kit are these two millimeter bolts that go through and uh, catch on these tiny uh, nylon squares on the other side. Um, the trick is to drill the holes in such a way that they go parallel down to the other side and the bolt can go through and screw onto this. Now this nylon plate has two tiny holes in it that will um, catch the bolt. The bolt will screw into these and hold the bolt. They will be held quite tightly so there's 
absolutely no chance this will ever uh, rattle loose. You can, however, if you want to, put some nuts on top of this just to make make you feel better. Now, um, the the control horn has to be situated in such a way that the holes line up with the hinges. If it's further in and the holes do not line up with the hinges you get uneven uh, up and down more up or more down um, if you put it in the correct place like this uh, you get equal up and down now I'm going to mark the two holes um, with this There you are. Then I'm going to use the off cut from the aileron to make it sit so that this is level and then use the drill press to, uh, to drill through. Now the hope is that when you take the horn and you put it in place and you push the bolts through that they will come out the other side ready to accept this little plate. Well, experience tells me that that is never the case. Uh, I don't know why, but it never happens. So what do you do? Well, you take a slightly bigger drill, two and a half millimeters, and you push it through and wiggle it about a little bit like this and so enlarging the holes from two millimeters to two and a half millimeters gives you a little play and uh, you can line up the bolts to coincide with the holes and you can even um, you can even move the, the, the horn so that it turns the right way. Simple. Here I've uh, taken the, um, the lead from the servo up, um, I've attached the aileron and I used a clothes peg to hold the push rod to a clevis that is on the, uh, the, the um, horn, aileron horn. Now I've got one of my favourite tools, it's a servo tester. Um, and now I can see that this is going to work perfectly. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. 